Welcome to the Heart Centered Sales Leader Podcast on webtalkradio.net. I'm your Heart Centered Sales Leader and of course host, Connie Whitman. Thanks for joining us today. Now I hope every week as you listen to this show that number one, you feel my passion about helping you change your perspective because you know I am on a tremendous mission to get that word sales from something that's icky, sleazy, and pushy to really something that we can do from a place of care and love and respect. So that's my mission and I hope that you're, you're right there with me and joining me on this, uh, on this path and this journey. If you're loving the show, I would love for you to go on Apple Podcast or YouTube, however you stream, um, rate, write a real short review and send me some love. I really appreciate it. And of course, subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Now, my motivational quote today is by the wonderful Jim Rohn, and it says, if you are not real willing to risk the usual, you will have to settle for the ordinary. So do you have a hot side hustle? I know so many of us do, especially uh, with 2020 being so crazy um, these days to help manage budgetary needs and maybe even just try to save some extra. Many people have these side hustles. What if you could take your side hustle and make it your new career? Um, now, does that sound like something that you're thinking, hmm, I like that idea? Well, today I have a wonderful guest, wonderful friend, uh, Julie Hood. Now, Julie combines her left brain love for computers with her right brain creativity side to help entrepreneurs create and market amazing online courses at coursecreatorhq.com. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me, she created her first online program way back in the dark ages, literally, uh, of the internet with a 1495 ebook after quitting her corporate auditing job to spend more time with her two kids. Since then, she's been working to help her clients create six-figure launches and build online businesses from the ground up. After 18 years online and helping clients, she combined her seventh grade passion for computers with her desire to help others teach and share their knowledge to create CourseCreatorsHQ.com. Julie's superpower is taking this complicated online process and making it simple and easy for everybody to follow. She's an office supply addict. I love that too. I love walking into <laughs> Staples, Julie, and her and daughter uh, of the most organized mother ever. Uh, she helps. So please help me welcome my wonderful friend Julie to the show. So Julie, thanks for taking the time, coming on, and I'm really excited about our conversation today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. We always have such a good time together, so I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, and I'm laughing, guys, because uh, Julie and I actually recorded a show over the summer, and in New Jersey, we had this tremendous hurricane, and the files were just, it was like five different disconnected files, and so my producer said, yeah, I think you guys need to re redo this. Uh, so Julie was kind enough to come back on round two, Julie. So I'm sure it's going to be perfect this round, right? <laughs> exactly. Even better this time around. I think so. So talk to us about your journey for you to get that first online, you know, ebook when online was not a thing when you started. So this is, you know, this has been a huge learning curve, but also for you, um, you have such deep knowledge before, you know, the internet and, and the, you know, the, the web has been what it is today. Yes. It was really, in some ways, I want to say it was easier back then. And mm -hmm. in some ways it's, it was a lot more challenging mm -hmm. because, um, there wasn't, Facebook, there wasn't, I don't think even YouTube existed at that point when I started and they didn't have all the nice ways to create fancy websites. Mm. So I, I, it helped that I had some computer science background. So I was learning HTML and, you know, getting started sure. and it was such a really fantastic way to learn it because now there's so much more that people have to figure out. It's easier to do now, but there is a lot more to it. You know, it was pretty simple. You set up a, a website. People were like, oh, you're going to send me email? Definitely. Let me sign up for that. <laughs> and so um, I got started that way and learned some really good lessons. Like the first one I will share with your audience is do not sell your product for $14.95. <laughs> you need a much, much higher level price to be able to make it really worth your time for it. Because I put 
everything I knew at the time about the topic into it. And you have to sell a lot of those to make that work. So that's my first lesson that I learned from back then is to make sure you get your price point high enough that you can work, work with it and have some, some capital to work with. And I'm sure there's some rules for what price point to come to market with, depending on what the offer is, right? So you, I know you talk through that in your uh, course creation uh, classes that you do. So, you know, people don't panic and go, well, I, I don't know what I, you know, my side hustle, I want to create a class, but I, I don't know. There's information out there to help you with those price points. But yeah, fourteen ninety five, kind of not even worth it then, um, so right, to speak. Right. And, and I'm laughing because my intro with the side hustle, Julie, if you're selling something for four ninety five, you're going to be doing that side. You're going to be staying at your job forever. <laughs> because right. Exactly. The, exactly. <laughs> the side hustle won't make enough for you, right? Yeah. Why did you choose? You know, with with all of that background um, that you had, why did you choose on the course creation kind of to niche in there? Yes. So that would be the second like lesson I would really like to share with your audience is to definitely pick a niche that you want to work with. Because when I started, so I started so early that I had kind of the, let me introduce everyone to online marketing. Mm. And it was a little tough to get traction with that because what would happen is, you know, one day I'd be talking to a brick and mortar restaurant and they needed a certain type of marketing. And then the next day I'd be talking to a podcaster and they needed similar stuff, but in a different language. Mm. So they were talking and, and trying to make your marketing resonate with that wide of an audience is really tough. So back in 2017, I kind of stumbled across it. So your audience might have something similar happen to them where they just sort of stumble into what's working. And so part of what I was doing is I attended a, one of those a live training, um, online events mm -hmm. that it, it was teachable as the company was putting oh, together. Yeah. They were, sh they were talking about doing online courses and they had all of these different speakers. And so I have kind of a unique way that I take notes from those kinds of things. It's a special format that, and, and I'll share it with your audience in case it's helpful for them. Cool. It's basically a two column format on a wide sheet of paper. And so on the left hand side, you sort of take your notes. And then on the right hand side, you put in the action steps that correspond with it so that that way, by the time you're done with your training, you've got, okay, here's what I learned. And then on the right hand side, here's what I got to go do, because I know a lot of times we'll go through training and we don't take that next step of actually let's go do it. I so, love that. It works really, really well. And so Teachable had this huge group of people who were also going through this session at the same time. And I, I thought, you know, I'm going to just try and see if anybody's interested in opting in and to get my notes. Because if they like these, I can build my email list that way and we'll run with it. Well, holy cow, so many people were incredibly interested in it. And I thought, you know what, this is a good fit for me because I love this audience. I love people who are trying to help others by spreading their message and helping train them. And so once it, it was something where it really resonated. And when that happens, I think that's sometimes like the universe kind of tapping you on the shoulder going, this is a good place for you to go do more of this. That's this worked funny. really well. So, um, so th that kind of was the kickoff. It wasn't an intentional, Ooh, let me, um, I'm going to try to go into course creators. It was kind of like, oh, I threw this out here. It's really popular. Let's get it together really, 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 really quickly. So I threw a website together and that kind of got us started. Which is fascinating because that's your organizational skills, right? That's how your brain literally works. So th see, this is the thing I think when people, um, they have a side hustle or they're thinking, I, I really do want to do something so that I, it could be mine and so I could eventually quit my day job or whatever, right? And, but what am I good at? So see your organizational skills, but then being part of this opportunity, right? Being in an online class, it was like, ding, ding, ding. It became where the two mesh together and it became super obvious what you should be doing. So I think people overthink what their zone of genius is versus just kind of sitting back and saying, I am good at that. Wow. Wow. Maybe I could help other people with that. And that's exactly how you created. And, and I love the course creator HQ, right? Headquarters. 
Um, I just love that. I'm visual, right? So I love that visualization um, that this is where you go to create all courses. You know, this is like the main headquarters of information. So I just love, I love it. But see, that's your creative energy as well. So that the logic and the creativity, um, again, came together beautifully for you. So just very cool. Very cool. It was, it's been so fun. Yeah. And, and so much easier because you can pick the language then that works with your audience. So, yeah. you know, I don't necessarily have to talk about clients or customers. I'm talking about students with my audience. So just simple things like that make the niching part so much easier and more effective, I think. Yeah, it's true. And, you know, my zone of genius, obviously, is sales, right? Because I've been in sales for 38 years. So when I talk, it's always about the client. Because if we're not coming from the client's perspective, you know, you're selling wrong. Because it's not about me. It's not about you from a sales perspective. It's always about the client and how can I serve? How can I help? How can I help them move their needle to change whatever it is that they're trying to create? So you're right. You have to have the right language as part of your message otherwise you're missing you're, you're not tapping into the people who really can help well who you can help right who, who really need you <clears throat> excuse me in their life <clears throat> excuse me why do you think online courses can be a great way for people to take the side hustles um, to the next level and why is now I think just so great opportunity for, for doing that so <clears throat> I love them because it's something it's, it's, you're creating your own assets. You sit down and you put this training together that not only is going to help someone, whether you're going to help them be a better parent or run a better business, or, you know, you're, you're spreading your message and helping them, but then they can do that without you. So it's different than having to be a consultant where you have to spend your physical time with mm. someone or on the phone or on Zoom calls with them. You know, they can they can absorb your class on their own time. So it almost it kind of becomes close to that concept of mailbox money that we all like, you know, getting sales without having to physically put in the time. I always like to put a little caveat on that because you do have to build the business. You know, the course isn't just going to sell itself. You do have to put some sales into it. And of course, you know that. Um, but it is closer because you don't have to be doing you know, consulting time all day long, you can sell your course. And also for coaches, I really love it because it helps push people who are on the fence, maybe over the edge. Cause you say, Hey, you know, I'll coach with you. And then I'll also give you my three big courses that I have. And it feels like a huge bonus to them. So that's, that's the second reason. And then obviously right now with all the craziness that's going on, people are at home. They're trying to figure things out by themselves at their computer. There isn't a better way than either working one-on-one -on -one with someone or if you can find a course somewhere to get you started and get you going in the right direction. It's, it's perfect timing. Yeah, and, and it's funny because, you know, that's what happened to me last year, right? Everything prior to 2020, I was live. I spoke live. I did live events. I did live training. Um, I had corporate clients, and I would teach, you know, their whole sales teams and all of this. And then 2020 came, and they were like, we can't go in the training room. There's not enough room to social distance. What do we do? And thank God for Zoom that we just pivoted and said, well, okay, let's, let's do everything digitally. But the difference with that is I did have to change some of my curriculum. They have breakout rooms, which was wonderful on Zoom, but there were some physical things that I would have people do to teach them coaching, right? Visual things like I did a landmine that you would walk through blindfold and you'd have to climb over the stuffed animals while someone gave you the directions. Well, I can't do that in a digital format. Uh, so that pivot right. and shift, right, became really important for me. And that's why I was jumping on all of my own. I, I was taking online classes to say, well, how do I pivot? How do I do that? How do I create that? I've never had to do that before. So even though those, those creative exercises that I did live, some of them, yeah, can transition over, but I had to figure out how can I be more creative in doing it now in this two-dimensional world. So it was a little bit of a shift all the way around. And, and here's the other thing why I agree with what you just said and why online is so important because we're sitting in front of our computers. And I'm sorry, 2020 is not going to be that big of a difference until everybody you know, gets the vaccine, which by the way, it's a pretty big world to everybody to get this vaccine. 
it's going to be a while before we can kind of go out like we did in the past. But I think more and more companies are finding out that doing this is more cost effective. And, and what happened for a lot of companies, productivity actually increased because they weren't spending time commuting. So this is the perfect time to take your side hustle. Or if you're thinking about creating something, now is the time. I think the resources are there. You're another resource, right, of teaching people how to create that course. So it's just the timing is everything. And I, I, again, you know, you could say COVID, yeah, people lost their lives. It was, it, it was a, you know, crap year. On the flip side, there was a lot of opportunity that was created. So, you know, it's that whole yin yang that, you know, we find that balance. So people like you are a really, really good natural resource, so to speak, um, for people who just don't know how to do what they're trying to do, right? To, to, the concept is one thing, creating and delivering another whole, you know, ball of wax. Exactly, exactly. And that's part of what we try to do in the course that I have. It's called 24 hour course creator. And there's, there's so much out there that you can do to figure out doing an online course, but I try to break it down and keep it as simple as possible. And we break it down into hour by hour. So you don't have to think about it. You sit down at your computer. It's hour one. I say, go do this for an hour. <laughs> you sit down for an hour two and go do the next thing for an hour. So yes, could you go figure a lot of this out on your own out on YouTube? Probably if you want to spend hours and hours and hours watching videos and, and trying sure. to track things down. But I tried to keep it simple for people because there's so much that you can do. Let's just do what we have to do to get a course live. Let's get our first course up and running and get some cash coming in the door. Yeah. And, and time is money. You know, so if you spend exactly. all this time researching, you're not bringing your product to market. You want the money to come sooner rather than later. So um, and you're and we'll have a link later for you guys if you want to jump on the course creator. Super affordable. And again, Julie is just, you know, we've known each other now for over a year or just about a I year. Know. Actually, time flies. Um, she's clear. She's fun. She knows what she's doing. And I think that's just a big help for anybody that really wants to catapult and start 2021, you know, off right, if there's something you want to create. So this brings me to my next question. What if I'm not an expert, right? Quote, unquote, I'm doing air quotes if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, or I haven't won a ton of awards in my field. Can I still create this online class? Like what makes me good at whatever that class might be? Absolutely. And can I tell a story? I have a, I have a story I like to share sure. for this. Okay. So back when I was in college, I was from a tiny little town and um, my high school actually did not have advanced math classes. Mm. So when I went to college, my advisor put me into honors calculus for five hours my first semester of college. And I don't know why we thought that was a good idea, <laughs> but we get into this class. So this professor, obviously we're the honors kids. So we, we get the top professor in the department, right? He's the one that's so fascinated with calculus and every single little detail about how you do things. So he would come in and do these incredibly complex problems for us. And I would be sitting there going, oh my gosh, I'm in over my head. I have to get a good grade to keep my scholarship. What are we going to sure. do? Yeah. And then one day he came running into class and he starts yelling at us and he's like, oh my gosh, you guys did so terrible on the test last week because we would take the same test that the regular calculus class took. He said, I'm so upset with you. You guys should be the top and you're, you did terrible on the test last week. And what had happened is he was spending, he was so fascinated with his topic and so far ahead of us beginners that he couldn't teach us as beginners. The TAs were much better at teaching everyone else how to do calculus than us. And so thank God we got through the class, but it's one of those things where being that phenomenal expert where you've, you're a PhD in something, yes, you have a lot of knowledge, but that doesn't necessarily make you a good instructor for a course because you want to be just enough ahead that you remember what it's like not to know. Like you have to, and one of the big mistakes I see people making a lot with courses is they try to put everything they know into their course. And if you're a good instructor, 
you pull out just what people need at the level they're at. So if you've got a beginner's course, you know what that's like to be a beginner and, and putting it in the right order for them. So um, I always tell that story about the professor because he totally overwhelmed poor freshman Julie <laughs> trying to get through college. And yes, he was an expert, but he was not the best teacher. <laughs> well, don't they say that a lot of people, like you're the best athlete and then you retire and they make you a coach, but you're a horrible coach because the right. skill was so in innate for you that you think, well, everybody knows this. Meanwhile, people, you know, kids that are just learning how to skate are like, you want me to do what, you know, <laughs> right. Or whatever, whatever the, uh, I was talking hockey cause my kids played hockey. So it's just really funny how sometimes we can over, uh, talk cause we're up here and the person who's learning from you, right. Is, is like at the starting gate and you're at the finish line. So, uh, talk about a big disconnect. So that's wonderful. And, and I love how you said that just be ahead of who you're teaching. So it doesn't mean you have to have 50 years experience. You might have three years experience at something, but can articulate it really well for someone who's just starting out. They're three years behind you. So that's just enough. But you remember what it was like three years ago when you were like, you want me to do what? Right. You don't understand <laughs> um, what that next step looks like. And it's so funny, Julie, when you were saying that I when I'm when I'm teaching, uh, it's very cute because people will ask me, well, what do you say if a client says to you, you know, give some kind of objection? And I'll stop and think and I go, well, I think I would say, and then I just answer. And they go, how do you do that? I'm like, how do I do what? And they go, you have an answer for everything. And it, But it makes me giggle. And I said, because do you think I came out of the womb knowing all of this? I go, this is 38 years of experience. So why would you compare yourself to me being able to have, you know, quote unquote, all the answers? Of course, I don't have all the answers. But compared to somebody who's new to sales and, and building client relationships, they've never done it before. But I've done it for 38 years. So I always tell them, stop comparing yourself to someone who has more experience than you. Ask them, what was it like when you first started out? You know, I made all the mistakes just like you did. You know, the first time you created a course, I'm sure it was, a, you know, an absolute train wreck to some extent. It was good, but then later on, you're like, a year. <laughs> right? And then you're like, wow, I missed this and I missed that. But that's how we learn. So I love that. Just be a little bit of head of what you're trying to teach because you don't forget what it was like learning and not knowing anything. So that's such great advice. How, did, how do people, when people come to you and they go, I really, really want to do this and I have this little side gig thing I'm doing, but how do I, like, how do I pick a topic to create that course? Like, how do you do that? Okay, so I've got a couple things that um, an exercise, if we have time, we can do real quick. <laughs> so if you grab a piece of paper and you draw a line from the top to the bottom and then a line from the left to the right, so you end up with four different boxes. Mm. And we're going to put some notes in each one of these boxes. Not during the podcast, just you can write this down and go check it out later. Mm -hmm. But the first place I want you to go in the top left box is Facebook groups. Mm. And so find Facebook groups, you know, for you it would be sales groups. And go out and see what are people asking over and over again that people are commenting on. Those are topics that are very, very important to your audience. Mm. And I did this with my audience. There were lots and lots of people asking, where do I host my course? Mm. You know, where should I put it? And there were so many people asking because there's lots of tools you can use. So I put together a little mini course that I give away to people about where you should host your course. And I got that idea from Facebook groups. So that's the first place that you go and you look is the Facebook groups and see what people are asking about and what they're, um, commenting on very frequently. The second place I want you to go is out to Amazon mm. and we're going to look at the books in your topic area and don't read them because we don't want to use their content, <laughs> but you can look at the table of contents to just kind of get a, some ideas. So I found one on online courses and it was talking about validating your idea. So I have another free training that I give away. That's all about validating your idea and making sure it's good. So that's another place to look is the table of contents in the Amazon books. And then our third box that we're going to use over on the bottom left is YouTube. Um, and type in how to related to your topic and see what kinds of things are coming up. And in this instance, you want to go look at the comments because you want to see what are people saying you left out or what are they still asking about? Or, mm. you know, there's a video there about X. 
um, how could I tweak that to be my own personal system? Or um, it seems like people are really interested in this. How could I combine it with another topic and, and look at um, what could be similar or what could be different? And then the fourth box is anywhere else where you can get research on your topic. So sometimes there'll be um, journals or articles that if you have an industry specific magazine or if you have some podcasts that you're listening to, you know, anywhere else where you can just kind of get some ideas about what people are doing. And here's the big secret that I want to share with your audience is you do not have to, and I actually don't recommend for your first course that you put together some huge signature course, like how to sell anything to anyone, anytime, anywhere, <laughs> you know, it's crazy. Yeah. Because number one, your students are not going to get through it. So, um, and number two, it's going to take you so long to finish that entire thing. Let's do something small. Let's do, I think, don't you even have a little training you do on how to introduce yourself, your introduction. Yep perfect first course. Uh, it's something people need. It's short and sweet. It gets them started. They get to know you, you give them something. And by the time they're done, they have this transformation. They're like, Oh, she taught me that. I wonder what else she can teach me. And That's that right. becomes future courses rather than one big, huge sales course. You've got all these different pieces that you can pull together. So that's where I like people to start when they're trying to figure out what idea, you know, those are kind of four different, by the time you do all that research, you'll probably have an idea of something that you really like to talk about something that you know you've got some experience in that you remember um, what it was like to not know and you can pull all that together then into your first course but don't make it everything you know <laughs> just make yeah. it a course and it's so funny I, I like the kiss rule right which is keep it simple stupid and not because I'm stupid or I think my students are stupid that's the opposite of what I think but when we make things so complicated People sit down and they think, oh, I'm never going to get this. Oh, this is so much work. There's no way I'll ever be able to do that. But when you keep it really simple and it's like all, like you just did, do this four quadrant kind of analysis and just go here. What, what are you saying when you, when you search under Facebook, your topic, what do you, how about under YouTube? How about right in, in, in magazines, whatever it is. So when you keep it really simple and people go, Oh, I could do that, that little step. Oh, that makes sense to me. I know, I know Facebook. Oh, I know how to go into the search bar. I could do that. When you make it simple, people are able to execute when you make it so complicated. And you know what, Julie, which is so funny through the years, you know, I, you and I, we've been through, I've been so through so much training in my career. Some of the people are really bad where they get up there and they vomit information out of you. And I think, well, okay, that's really good information. What do I do with it? How do I implement it? How do I choose what step to take? There's never a how to, they're very good at sharing information. Sharing information is not telling me how to go and execute. So it's all about the how to and everything you just said, it's about the how to keeping it simple is the how to. So I love that. I love, you know, your example of write all the notes on one side and then on the other side, what is your action step as you're going through it? What do you need to do as soon as this class is over to start you on that journey of changing whatever it is or creating um, wh whatever it is in, in your course? So yeah, keep it simple, man. I think we... I think we think if we make it complicated, oh, I must be very smart then. It doesn't mean you're smart. It means that you're not connecting with other humans who are trying to create whatever the change is, you know, in, in creating courses or, or whatever their zone of genius is. I just love that. I love that. Thanks. Yeah, and I agree with you. I think it's actually harder to know what to leave out and to keep things more simple. I think there's a Steve Jobs quote about focus, how much, and I'm murdering it here, but something about how knowing what to say no to and what to leave out is harder than throwing everything you have at something that, that the, the focusing part is where yeah. the success comes. And yeah. I think that's tougher, honestly, for, especially when you're trying to put a course together. Yeah. Especially like me, I have 38 years of experience. So I, I like to give more, like I love to over deliver, right? So I'm thinking I could tell them everything. I, how do you teach 38 years worth of stuff <laughs> in, you know, a 10 week class? You can't do it. And, it, and what happens is then you overwhelm the student and then they feel defeated. So instead of empowering them with all of your knowledge, you're really demoralizing them because they think I just can't do that. I'm not good enough. I'll never be able to. And then the negative record player kicks in. So keeping it simple, like you said, is it just makes 
makes sense. What are three secrets? If you could give three secrets, what would be your three key secrets to creating that success? Or did we already talk about that? Um, we've sort of addressed some of them, but let me see. I think there's one more that I definitely want to throw in there for your audience. And that is to keep whatever the training lesson is that you're doing, keep it short. We've all sat down, I know, at a, an online course and it has a 90 minute video to get started. And I don't know about you, but I sit down and I go, I don't have 90 minutes to watch your video. No way. <laughs> so keep them short, like five, six, under 10 minutes, if you can, for each lesson, because that gives each of us a little dopamine hit when we're like, I finished that. I finished that lesson. I finished that lesson. You know, they they move through it quickly. And it's... um. It's a challenge, I think, for the course creators to really break things down to that level because it is really short um, lessons can be so much more impactful. But making yourself be effective in a short amount of time, it, it takes some effort to, to do that well. But yeah, but I, I love that because if I keep it five, ten minutes, right, simple, simple, and then I say, okay, now this is all you have to do. And then you give them what that step is. Those mini successes, all of a sudden, they're like, well, that was kind of easy. What's the next one? And then they watch the next module and they think, well, I could do that too. So the, I love how you said the dopamine. Success makes us feel good. So instead of the negative record player kicking in of you can't do this, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, Julie makes it so simple, but you don't have Julie's experience, you know, blah, 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 blah. Now I have these many successes and, it, and what, acts, what actually ends up happening is people will complete the program yes. because they're winning instead of feeling defeated. And, and, and that's one thing I know I want when people buy my programs, I want you to finish it. Not yes. I want you to learn and I want you to move your needle of getting better at sales and those the building client relationship conversations. Right. But I want you to finish the program. Otherwise you're never going to move your needle. You're never going to grow. You're never going to improve your client conversations. And I'm sure it's the same thing with you. You want them to create a course and then be able to make some money off of that for them to yes. say, holy crap, I could do this. What's the next thing I want to, what's the next course I want to create mini course or whatever it is. Right? So mini successes propels us forward to do more and more, learn more and more, implement more and more, execute, right? All of those things. It feels good. It feels really good. Exactly. You got it. That's, yeah. that's, that's the goal. Last question. What's the next step that people should take um, to begin creating an online course, especially if they do have a side hustle or let's say that they, they have a corporate job and they're listening and they're thinking, you know, I always wanted to do right. So they're not doing a side hustle, but they have this zone of genius um, and they could do this part time. Right. So what would be that oh, next step to help people Again, okay, I like what I'm hearing. I think I have something I could bring to market. What do I do now? Yes. So the exercise that we did with the figuring out your idea. Love it. That's a really good place to start. Another thing is I like to have people kind of take a survey of the audience and the arena that you want to play in. Mm -hmm. And so that means going out and maybe looking at, okay, what is the Facebook groups that are out there? What podcasts are out there? What's, um, you know, where are people already hanging out in, in the area that I'm interested in? Now you have to be a little careful with this because we want to know what's going on, but it can also head to overwhelm if you do too much of it. <laughs> because what ends up happening is you see somebody who's been at their 10,000th step and they've got this huge website with all this information and you're just getting started. And so you don't want to go that far. Don't go, don't go that deep, but just kind of get a lay of the land, you know, for your topic area. Who are some of the gurus that are already out there? Who who's doing what and and what are they what are they sharing? And your goal from that research then is to figure out where am I going to fit? Where what is my niche? Where am I a little bit different? So, you know, for my course creators, the way there's lots and lots of people who help people create courses, some really fantastic people. And a lot of them I promote and recommend. Um, but as I was thinking through, you know, what makes my stuff different, it's keeping, trying to keep it simple and keeping it like our 24 hour program hour at a time. I'm not going to 
teach you how to do your huge signature course. That's not what I teach. I have other people who I recommend for that. Sure. I'm going to teach you how to get started. So figure that's where I figured out, you know, I think there might be a niche here for me, a place where I could play. So if folks can figure out, okay, this is kind of what I see yeah. out there. Google is our friend. And then this is where I'm going to fit in. So. Yeah. And I, I love that. And here's the other thing, guys. And, and Julie, you know, kind of just tapped this. You have to ask for help. And so as you were saying that, you know, last year, but really even before last year, I have probably 20 different courses that I've created over the 20 years being in business, doing it live and doing it digitally, very different. I published a book last year, right? Julie knows that. She hooked me up with Kathy, um, who, Kathy Davis, who was the one who helped me bring it to market, and Rebecca Hall, who got me to the number one international bestseller, right? So I, I, it was my content, but I didn't. Okay, never wrote a book. What do I do? So you have to reach out and ask people who are experts because what ends up happening, and I've done this through my career, my 20 years in business, where I'm like, I don't need to, I don't need to hire people. I could figure this out. Well, you spend so much time investigating and, and figuring it out that you could have brought it to market and made money. So you're, we're free to spend money, but we could have been making more money. And so last year, and I don't know, Julie, if I shared this with you, I just hired Michael Neely um, as a business coach. Yes, I'm a business coach, and I hired a business coach because we have everybody blind spots. Everybody needs a coach. Right? Everybody, ne I really believe that everybody needs a coach. And it was so funny because I had the book, I had the podcast for seven years, international status. I had my business for 20 years. I had all of this course creation already done, right? And um, and I speak all the time. I've been on a million platforms speaking. So I was doing the four pillars of authority that he talks about, but I wasn't combining them together so there wasn't this cohesive my energy was all over the place and not cohesively creating my real what is my authority out there so I was all over the place and when I, I was on a three-day event with him and I within an hour Julie I thought I don't know what I don't know holy holy crap I have all these blind spots and I ultimately hired him so shout out to Michael he's he's awesome but that so guys if you think you want to create this is inexpensive. I'm going to include the link um, for you guys, but it's, it's a no brainer. And I'm telling you, you'll fast forward making the money. So what you're spending, you can 10, 20, 30 times make that on the back end. Don't be penny wise, dollar foolish. And not just with Julie. I believe that with myself too. You know, sometimes we really do have to say, well, I could, I could spend that couple of hundred dollars because on the flip side, I can make a few thousand dollars. So just right. be mindful of that um, as well. And I, I learned that last year, big time with, I thought, well, I published a book. I did this. I did this. I'm so great. Yeah but it's like being inside the jar and not being able to see the directions of how to pull it all together. And so, Ooh, right, isn't that a, like a good that visual? Analogy, Someone else yes. said that to me and I thought, holy crap, that's what I felt like. I was stuck in this jar and the directions were right outside. Well, that didn't do me any good. So really, <laughs> it's true. So be mindful of that. Guys, go to Julie's website first. Check out all the free stuff she has. You know, all the little examples that she gave us today. It's Course Creator HQ. H creators with an S with an S creators, HQ.com. Email Julie. If you have any questions, Julie hood, J U L I H O O D at course creators, HQ.com. And I promise I will post that mini course. It's starting July 11th. So if you want to do it, January yeah, 11th. I'm, I'm sorry, Jen, what did I say? July. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's when we did our last show. Uh, yeah. Flashback to that, the hurricane we had in Jersey. Uh, January 11th, 11. Good day to start too. Love those numbers. But I'll post that so you guys could find Julie's course if you'd like. But check out the website first. Um, get to know Julie a little better. Highly recommend her. I love her. We've built this great friendship wealth of information. Um, thank you so much for sharing um, these wonderful, wonderful tips with my audience. And I really hope that you guys uh, get in there, go, you know, create, create your genius. This is the time uh, that we have. I know we don't have a lot of downtime, but if you're home, you're working from home, do something for you, create something for your future, for your kid's future and for your, your own legacy that you, you actually can create. So Jules, thanks for, thanks for being on. Love our conversations always. You're just awesome. 
thank you so much. This was so fun. I hope everyone got a little inspired that you can go check out some things and maybe do a course. Love so, it's all about thank inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, all about inspiring, Rachel. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, and I had fun too. I always have fun hanging out with you. And uh, you, I hope you guys will join us weekly as we question, build, and discover together that how heart-centered sales can easily help you grow, allowing you to embrace sales and realize that shifting that mindset, this movement I am on, um, to become that heart-centered professional, it's possible and easier than you think. And here's another example where creating your content come from that heart-centered place like Julie talked about um, to really, really serve whoever your target audience is. But it has to start in you from a place of love and service and care and respect. Um, thank you again, Julie. Thank you all uh, for tuning into the Heart Centered Sales Leader podcast with me, your Heart Centered Sales Leader and host Connie Whitman on webtalkradio.net. Everyone have just a wonderful week. Open your mind to the client relationships that are possible as you become that heart centered sales leader um, you're really destined to be. And I'm excited and so honored uh, to have each of you on this journey with me. And I really look forward to seeing you all next week for more inspired content with like Julie and my, and my other guests. So thank you so much, everyone. See you later.